This is Sagittarius A, the supermassive black hole located at the very center of the Milky Way galaxy, as it appears in the game Elite Dangerous. It's over 25,000 light years away from the Earth, and even in this game, it takes a long time to reach. Making a journey like this comes with an educational caveat. The game forces you to learn about stellar evolution in order to get further and further out into space. There is a region in the game called the Galactic Bubble, a roughly spherical region of star systems that have been colonized by the game's three primary factions. When traveling here, one can simply stop at any station, owned by anyone, and refill their fuel tank. However, once you leave the bubble, there are no stations, and you are forced to use a new method called fuel scooping. The engines of the ships in the game use a hydrogen fuel to enter hyperspace, jumping from star to star, between 1 or 2 and up to 30 light years at a time. Refueling in deep space is achieved via a device called a fuel scoop, requiring pilots to fly close to a hydrogen burning star and literally scoop hydrogen fuel from it into the fuel tank. Such a task is dangerous, as the heat of a star can cause damage to the ship, and their intense gravity forces a ship to move relatively slowly while close to it. Utilizing this method causes one to learn a thing or two about the nature of stars. The first question I naturally had was, which stars emit hydrogen? Some reading on the game's forums told me that only main sequence stars can be used for refueling, consisting of the star classes O, B, A, F, G, K, and M. I remember this with the handy mnemonic device of O oh, be a fine girl kiss me. From here, my next question was, what does main sequence mean, and what are the other sequences? I had encountered stars that looked similar to a K or M class star, but were not fuel stars, called T Tauri stars and Herbig AE slash BE stars. These, it turns out, are pre-main sequence stars, meaning they are young stars that haven't yet begun the process of hydrogen fusion. There are also brown dwarf stars, which look visually distinct from their hydrogen burning cousins. These are stars that never gained enough mass to reach their main sequence, and remain as they are for the duration of their lives. So, what other stellar classes exist? Some of the more visually appealing stars are white dwarves and neutron stars. These are stars at the end of their life cycle, having already passed their main sequence, as well as the supergiant or hypergiant phase. They have collapsed in on themselves, and rotate very quickly while ejecting plumes of radiation from their poles. The game even includes realistic rotational periods. This is a relatively slowly rotating neutron star. This is a much faster one. Players need to know about neutron stars and how they work, because those plumes of radiation have a secondary in-game purpose. If one flies through the radiation, it will supercharge their frameship drive, allowing them to travel much further with a single jump. Players have even noted that sometimes neutron stars are located in a kind of line 
allowing the player to repeatedly supercharge their FSD and travel up to a thousand light years in just 10 jumps. Another thing one tends to learn about with Elite Dangerous is the placement of brown dwarf stars. Sometimes when moving between clouds of stellar gas and dust, one will encounter a lateral cloud of brown dwarves, making them unable to refuel for long periods of time. However, when these clouds are encountered, one simply needs to go off route and jump up or down relative to the galactic plane, and they will find more fuel stars. This is because the lack of mass in the area causes most of the stars to form without the necessary materials to begin hydrogen fusion. One last thing to take note of with this game is black holes. While they don't have the accretion disk of matter that should be surrounding them, the game's black holes do a brilliant job of showing gravitational lensing. I would advise any player to fly as close to a black hole as possible, and then slowly move around it. There is no more confusing and spectacular a sight than reality itself bending and warping around your ship. So, that's how a video game taught me stellar evolution. The map of Elite Dangerous is a one-to-one -one scale replica of the entire Milky Way galaxy, containing hundreds of billions of stars generated by a supercomputer with such accuracy that the game actually predicted an existing solar system. When scientists discovered the ultra-cool red dwarf TRAPPIST-1 and its seven planets, elite players realized that the game already contained this system, under a different name, located only 78 light years away from its actual location, and on a galactic scale, 78 light years is no distance at all. There's a lot of galaxy to explore out there, Space Cowboys. If you want to have a look around the Milky Way galaxy without the constraints of modern technology, pick up a copy of Elite Dangerous. You won't regret it. 07, Commanders. In the next video, I'll explain how a different video game, Kerbal Space Program, taught me how orbital mechanics work. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel, which is Dead Kennedy in Space. If you want to support me further, consider donating on Patreon or purchasing some of my work through Amazon or Teespring. Thank you, and I'll see you over the curve, Space Cowboys. Live there. On the moat of dust. Suspended. In a sunbeam. In a fast cosmic arena.